know Obamacare and even myself like on Obamacare now and, and uh, having some little medical problem and, and like these crummy doctors they send me to and I have to go to like some bad neighborhood to some have to some <laughs> Russian doctor who doesn't speak English using some 1960s equipment on me and you know it's just like <laughs> damn this is great. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Affordable care. Can I just have some pot? For everybody. Can I just have some pot, please? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Can I just, I'll just grow it myself. So what do you think about the states that have legalized it, being able to push back against federal intrusion? We're still seeing that the war is still on there. Um, in D.C., the voters voted for it, and they're saying, no, you can't have that. We're going to go ahead and push back. Well, first of all, if you've ever been to D.C., uh, I can't imagine why you wouldn't want everybody to be high on pot. It's a really scary, weird, I mean, I it's the most segregated, dangerous <laughs> place in the world. And wherever there's a dangerous ghetto, trust me, it's better if they're all smoking pot. You want everybody <laughs> to be high, trust me. Yeah. If you want safer streets, pot, yeah. please. But see, I don't think that that would work because then they couldn't keep everyone in this constant state of fear yeah. like terrorism because i don't think anyone's really worried about terrorists when they're you know high and laughing it and, and i've <laughs> never seen anybody that's been stoned really heavily stoned wanting to buy crack you know yeah. I, I you know but i have seen plenty of people who are drunk wanting to get cocaine or speed so the, the whole gateway theory or thinking um, that they can drive yeah there. <laughs> forget about it yeah i mean the, the, the whole gateway theory is so ridiculous and uh you know it's putting Putting marijuana in the same classification as other harsh drugs, and then and then pharmaceuticals aren't, it, yeah. you know, and and uh, and you know we we became foster parents too back in in Los Angeles, and and all these foster kids are also on all this medication. I mean mm -hmm. they they Mandatory. purposely yeah they purposely drug all these foster kids up, and and what becomes even trickier is when, you know, you the, the kids like that they don't even want to get off it because they, they become addicted, you know? And yet they're convinced that they're not addicted to drugs because like- They're a, legal. Because it's from a doctor. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. And even I'll be like, watch my little documentaries. It's like, no, it's like, <laughs> you know, the drug addiction is a lot stronger than reasoning. You know, drug addiction is a very powerful animal that overpowers everything. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of lives destroyed from that, just coming from Florida where it's a huge epidemic there. Um, which is a lot of the time where we want to educate our viewers on jury nullification mm -hmm. so that when they do have those opportunities to, to get in those courtrooms where they are looking at weed cases or whatever, they can decide if it's a, a just law right. to send someone to prison because they had a joint. Right. Not to mention, I mean, I think one of the, this whole thing is not even close to being over until we can start letting people out of prison. There's so many people that are still in prison for like little small ridiculous, you know, marijuana related cases mm -hmm. um, that, you know, I think I think there's a big part of the government now that's wanting to make everybody think like, oh, the pot, the pot thing is, uh, you know, you, you guys don't need to be protesting about pot anymore. Just look, you know, go to Colorado. It's all good, you know. Yeah. And and of course, a lot of people now are using Colorado as like, look at it's turning into like, you know, pot hell because look at all the people are but you know then just I don't know I mean I'm sure it'll just it's, open it's up the, the gates. excitement of yeah. it it'll I think it'll fizzle out a little bit but yeah I, if you let it spread out it won't be such a you know a hotbed for it if it's you know hey when they legalize it here in Texas I'll be the first guy to try to open a dispensary on 6th street yeah well, That'll be sweet. I won't admit That'll be a that sweet I day. might be lined up there. All right, so, all right. <laughs> well, we just had a freeway uh, Ricky Ross in studio oh, yeah? basically talking about the, the pipeline to prison and how the, the hip-hop industry and is really trying to set up a whole generation of people to, to go and li spend their lives in prison to idolize this kind of gang culture, drug culture, and things like that. And... Um, you know, what was your experience working? You mean if I don't put go into debt to put corporate logos all over my body, <laughs> I'm not cool? Uh, yeah, I no. mean, gee, uh, <laughs> oh, I, lo I love Rick. You know, I've, I've been friends with Ricky now, um, God, over 10 years. You know, I helped him, I helped with his case a little bit, helped him get out of prison, and um, Freeway Rick is awesome. Um, and so we've got, there's a new film coming out that I didn't make this film, but I was a co-producer on it. I've, I've helped with a little bit called Crack in the System and it premieres on Al Jazeera in February. So check that out, Crack in the System, the Freeway Ricky Ross story. Uh, it's an amazing, amazing job done by Mark Levin and others. Yeah, and he, I mean, were you shocked to 
um, discovering anything with the CIA's connections with that. I mean, even when we spoke to him, he was like, well, I didn't know, you know, I just. <laughs> right. I mean, it, it, it's, you know, it's funny because I, you know, I've, I'm always like the guy, maybe because I'm a Libra who gets caught in the middle of people. Like I got caught in between Alex Jones and Peter Joseph of Zeitgeist. And I got caught in between Alex Jones and uh, Mike Rupert, you know, and Mike Rupert was like the LAPD guy that said that, that, that uh, said the, the CIA was trying to pay him to do that. And, and uh, you know, and Gary Webb died and then Mike Rupert just committed suicide. So it's like you, you see these, these whistleblowers committing suicide one after another. And, you know, there's part of you that says like, oh, it's got to be the CIA killing him. And then there's another part of you. It's like, well, I knew that guy. He was a little like off and depressed and maybe drank too much and all that. And, and then sometimes I wonder if there's like a fine line on there where people just allow these things to get to them. I think maybe that's why Alex, Alex just seems to be kind of like this bullish character who just can just keep going, whether you love him or hate him. He just has this, uh, you know, this ability to kind of like roll it off at the end of the night and enjoy life, you know. So, you know, if I could say that's all the, all the Alex Jones viewers out there, don't take anything too seriously. If you get, if yeah. you, if you allow yourself to get too bummed out or too freaked out by any of this, then then they're winning. They, yeah, and, they've you know, won. Then they've won. So, you know, no matter how scary or messed up the world seems, like you know. It's all just a ride, Yeah, Bill used to say. Yeah, absolutely. That's what Alex told me when I first started working here was just go, dan go dance, go have fun, go yeah. out to dinner with your friends. That's yeah. how you win. Yeah, That's don't stay up them. all night like reading conspiracy books mm -hmm. and like, think, you know, just you gotta, you gotta just. That's what they want yeah, is to you keep gotta your have mind trapped. Yeah, exactly. And fear. And to make people like us seem crazy. It, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, well, so I know you were here speaking with Alex on the radio show today, and uh, is there anything you can tell me about your top secret top projects? I don't know. <laughs> it's not that top secret. Well, I've got a, a couple of documentaries underway. One is, like, really serious, and the other one's more comical. The serious one is uh, it's going to be a look at how um, governments have been staged in elections and, and it have been rigged throughout history to create the history of the world. It's, but what, and I know that's been a, it's a story that Alex Jones has told many times before, but the difference between this one is that we're gonna be going over to a former Soviet uh, country and telling a lot of the, the film from there. Hmm. And so I'd like to give a shout out to uh, everybody in Sofia, Bulgaria, who's watching this interview. That will be coming over there soon. And so we've got, we've got a, a very rare, amazing thing to have like a, a stronghold, a base of operations with, SWAT style security, the whole bit, to be able to go to some former Soviet places and, and do some journalism that would have never been possible before. Yeah. Um, so that's that's one film. The other film is gonna be another pot doc because I just can't stay off of it. I don't know, I just can't. It's just too fun and easy to make pot docs when yeah, you're well, surrounded by it. People love it. You know, <laughs> as long as they're buying, I'm selling. Um, but uh, it, this one is going to be a look at all these publicly traded companies that are out there right now. There's over 130 publicly traded marijuana companies, and a lot of them are all fraudulent. And it's become, it's become a way for like it's a it's. I'm looking at it as almost a new shift in the drug war, and and you've got people out there that are making millions of dollars off of drugs that are never even touching drugs. Right. And it's actually drug dealing has moved on to the stock market yeah, now. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and, and a lot of it's penny stocks. Yeah. You know, and we're talking to people like Jordan Belford, who was actually cellmates with Tommy Chong when I visited Tommy in prison for the first drug war film. Uh, Tommy was writing his book in prison at the time called Teo of Chong. And he had this uh, Wall Street uh, guy in, in prison with him. And he convinced this guy, hey, you should write a book. Well, it turned out to be The Wolf of Wall Street. Wow. So how crazy is that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah so, I was going to say those yeah. guys are probably used to yeah. <laughs> that sort of thing on there. Yeah, so Jordan <laughs> Belford. And um, um, and so there's just the, there's a whole a whole other layer right now going on in the marijuana industry that I don't think a lot of people are aware of that I think is absolutely fascinating and some uh, Ponzi schemes that are in, in just crazy money-making schemes of people pulling millions of dollars out of thin air mm -hmm. uh, because... A lot of people will just think like, hey, I'll invest in marijuana. It sounds like a good investment. Well, if they're not realizing, you know, they, they better look at who they're really investing in. Right. Well, because it's, there's all sorts of things that they can just kind of put out there and then, oh, no, we've decided we're not going to legalize it in this yeah. state. Or, I mean, 
But now we got the PayPal founder just coming out, becoming yeah, one of marijuana's biggest investors. So we're seeing that, you know, the cat's kind of out of the bag on cannabis here. It's just which way is it going to go? I personally think, uh, you know, Monsanto and companies like this are trying to figure out how they can, um, you know, turn it into a genetically modified well, thing there's to been, control. There's but. been a lot of, there's been conspiracies the whole, like ever since I've been in the pot movement about how companies are trying to uh, put genetics into the marijuana thing. When you get into these high-end marijuana people, they're all about their genetics and owning like proprietary genetics and all this. And, and yeah, it's a very strain, interesting thing. Like yeah, all these strains <laughs> and, and, uh, um, and like being able to trademark or copyright or patent these strains. And, and, you know, it'll be interesting to see if that's ever really able to be fought out in court or not, you know, so it, it's, it's interesting. Well, they can do it with corn and yeah. tomatoes. Yeah, I know. So I'm sure they, I'm sure they will in the future. So it's, it's going to be a, a, it'll be a crazy future, you know, <laughs> as this thing is, cause there's a lot of money in it. But at the same time, there's something different about the pot business than even the alcohol business. And so a lot of people always draw the similarities between the ending of alcohol prohibition to where we are right now with alcohol, I mean, where we are with marijuana right now. And yeah, there are similarities to that, but then at the other, at the other end, people weren't able to grow great alcohol in their backyard. Um, you know, so marijuana is a, it's a different animal. It, it really lends itself to the do-it-yourselfers and the people who are not gonna like sign up to be a part of some big thing. It's, it's mm -hmm. you know, marijuana almost breeds a very, uh, you know, very loner individualistic kind of thing, in, you know, in, in, on some regards compared to alcohol. Yeah, it already has been kind of thriving in the underground yeah. for all of, all of this time, so. Right, I mean, when alcohol prohibition ended, people were like, okay, I wanna get Bacardi rum, or I wanna get, you know, when, when, when marijuana prohibition ends, people, they just, they're, they're gonna get whatever they can, wherever they can, and do it however they can, and they're gonna try to spend as little money as possible, and there's just no way they can control it. That's what's so amazing about pot. They just can't control it. They can't stop it. It's like a, it's like a little weed that beat the government, you know? Yeah. That's what's great, because <laughs> the more the government tried to, like, beat down this weed, actually, the, the stronger it got, you know? I mean, we didn't, yeah, I mean, they, they complain about how, the, how there's so much more THC today. It's like, well... Thanks to you guys, you yeah. know what I mean. <laughs> That's right, you guys. You guys, Stronger because of what you guys, yeah, because of what you did. Like the the pot is better than ever because like people are out there perfecting that stuff, you know. Yeah. I mean, I've I've heard some of the best vegetables uh, you're ever gonna find are inside of prisons because you, where there's marijuana growers that are in prison because these guys are in there like making tomatoes and onions. They're like these little perfect, you know things and so Tommy Chong <laughs> was telling me the best vegetables of all time were <laughs> like grown with all <laughs> these make like, sure their scientific expertise yeah. doesn't so it's lose that. <laughs> yeah it's like this whole this whole breed out there of people that are uh, you know and, and so it's interesting to see this PayPal guy uh, this Peter Thiel who I guess he's the one that they uh, they based that Silicon Valley show mm -hmm. on that HBO show the, the Mike Judd show was based on him and um, so that's fascinating though that that he's getting into this for sure. Yeah, I think a lot of investors are, and people obviously watching the stock market are, like you said, trying to figure out how they can get in on this and maybe not in the penny stocks because we saw that in exactly the Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah. It's funny how it all comes around, but that's how people are kind of losing out in this. Um, well, anything else you didn't get to talk about on the Alex Jones show today? <laughs> God, you know, I don't, um, no, I feel free. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, it was great coming to Austin and being here. And yeah, well, we're glad appreciate to it. Yeah. be a part of your upcoming top secret project. Yeah, we're yeah. We're looking forward to Alex it. Alex already did a great interview for it. So, you know, I'm sure it's going to be a year or so before this thing comes out. There's a lot of work to do, but yeah. Appreciate you guys having us here, and you guys have been great. Well, we appreciate you and everything you've done. Documentary is obviously one of the best ways to break open minds. All right. Shatter so through much. the lies and illusion. All right. <laughs> Thank All you. right. Thank you. And that's it for the show tonight. If you are watching us on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. Become a subscriber to the Alex Jones channel. We will bring you constant updates, flooding your feed with all that you need to fight the info war. And then head over to prisonplanet.tv. We are still running our special, only $29.95 a year. And you can share your username and password with up to 20 people at the same time. So that is an excellent deal. Get yours today. Thank you all so much for tuning in and we'll see you here again Monday night at 7 p.m. Central.